Wednesday morning, it is hump day, if you will. We've got weather or rain showing up in parts of the Bay Area, mainly not well, some sprinkles at Ocean Beach right now. We'll look at that. Um, this is the satellite loop. Here's California. And everything north of this orange orb is going to be wet for a number of days. So this is Cape, Cape Mendocino. Everything south, all the way down to San Diego, dry for the next week or so. I think most of us are dry for all intents and purposes through March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So it's a, we're into the early week, first week of March. The atmospheric river, the, the fuel for these storms is all going into the Pacific Northwest, and they're going to get plenty of rain and snow up in the Cascades. So keep an eye on that. Um, let's take a look at the radar right now. We can do this. This is as of 1025 this morning, and it's just like a non-event. Uh, up around Sacramento, there's something going on up there, right? But this is a really weak... Let's see if I can put a loop on it real quick. I may be, may be asking to. Oh, yeah, I think I can. Okay, so roll the loop. And you can kind of see it. It's just a diffuse pattern. Um, it's not a big event at all. And it's going to peter out here this afternoon. You may see a few sprinkles in your area. This article was written, uh, came out today in the Press Democrat. My kind of, I, say, I call it a home, my hometown because this is where I started. When we talk about living in my van and all that stuff, it kind of all happened up there. I was... Um, you know, I was starting out, this was my first job, and I'd never been on TV before. I, I was a meteorologist, but I didn't know anything about TV. I didn't know, I still don't know anything about TV, truthfully. But uh, that, I was, you know, I would, I would sleep in my van, which was awesome, by the way. And I'd go surf, you know, I used to go to Salmon Creek a lot, and Doran, and whatever, and camp, or surf, or whatever. And then I'd come back to the uh, Santa Rosa JC and shower, right? And then put my suit on and go to work. And then I'd go... At night, I'd go find a, I'd, I'd like Charlie and Ann Shepard lived up in Santa Rosa and I'd go park in their driveway, sleep there. I'd, I'd switch it up between friends and stuff and places, but it was awesome time. But this is a story written by Austin Murphy, um, kind of about my trajectory, which is really, once I see it in writing, I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of weird. I mean, I, I just, I always assumed it was normal, but it was kind of weird in my trajectory. But Austin used to write for Sports Illustrated. Um, if you're a Sports Illustrated SI reader, you know who Austin Murphy is. He's awesome. And anyway, so he did. A, it's a really, it's really well written. And by the way, it's not super flattering of me at all. I mean, I, it's like wow, this guy, um, which is fine because you know, you know, you, if you know me, you know. Um, okay, so and anyway, it's a good read. I think it's online. Um, this is the California Nevada River Forecast Center. This is the 24 hour rainfall accumulations. This is the state of California. There's Lake Tahoe Bay. I know, right? It's hard to see because it's, it's, it's so there, it's a little better. But my, I want you to see the variation in rainfall because that area I showed you here is all hitting north of Cape Mendocino. And that's what we're seeing here. And these are the rainfall accumulations. And the accumulations, like, you know, almost, well, just north of Crescent City, we're seeing two, what was it, north of Crescent City? Yeah, it's just north of Crescent City, two and a half inches of rain. A little further south, you're seeing an inch down by uh, Shelter Cove. And then it really tapers off till you get into the Bay Area where you're looking at a few hundredths of an inch, which is occurring right now. And my friends in LA, Nothing for you right as, as of yet. This is a live camera. This is the Sutro Tower camera. This is the avenues, outer Richmond, inner Richmond, panhandle of the park. But you can't see it. But what you can see are those raindrops on the lens. And I like this shot because that's how much it's raining. Ooh, just got another little raindrop. So it's really a light front. I'll do this a lot. I'll come into, I'll take a radar and then I'll take a live picture. Let's see if I can do that. So in this, that's live. And the suture tower is right about here, right? And that's the system going through. And so in the read, you go, well, why don't you just use radar? Don't you trust it? No, I don't trust radar. So a lot of things change with radar. Radar, it shoots, it shoots a beam up into the atmosphere. And by the time it gets to San Francisco, the Amina Mux radar, it's already up over, it's really high. It shoots at an angle. So it misses raindrops sometimes that are actually hitting the ground or it shows rain that's falling, that's not falling, so on and so forth. So anyway, so that's kind of what, how that, that's a good way to calibrate, in my mind, to calibrate the radar. This is the GFS, Global Forecast Model, and it's going to show us sea level pressure and it's going to show us rainfall. That's Franny, the dog who is, by the way, little dogs are impossible to train. I, 
I was a, I have had big dogs my whole life. I've trained big dogs really well. Like I had them just being perfect. But little dogs, as hard as you try, you, they're so they're just like they. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd love to hear what you think. But she's awesome. Like I love her. But like, come here. And then I try to grab her, and she runs. I go, hey, friend, quit barking, you know, and and, and trying to discipline her. All right. So sorry about that. But um, it, it is what it is. She'll probably stop in a minute. Um, and then okay, so and she's gone to the bathroom, and she's been fed. And she's not suffering. Um, <laughs> this is the model. And you see it kind of click through here. And that's how quickly that system goes through. This is Thursday morning. This is Friday. This is in Pacific Northwest. See that right there? Boom. It still misses us. This is Crescent City gets hit pretty good on Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then you can see it sort of working its way through. So not a lot going on. And not a lot going on, not just for a little while, but for a long while. So I'm going to back this up. This is the GFS. This is, um, I bet it's the UPS guy. Because what happens is anytime somebody drives by, right? So this UPS guy drops something off. And I'll bet it's, I'll bet it's awesome, whatever it is. I love getting boxes at my door. Okay, so here is, this is rainfall accumulation global model, GFS. And what you're going to see is, first thing I notice is, okay, this is over the next, this is through next middle of next week. There's where the most of the rain falls. So they got Crescent City up over three and a half, four inches of rain, two and a half inches of rain up around Yukai, or, uh, uh, Eureka. And as we go forward through time, this is all the way, that goes all, this is accumulation all the way until March 7th. March 7th. Doesn't mean that's going to happen, but it sure gives you a good idea. I think what this model is good for, all this, both the models I just showed you, it gives you a good broad brush. You go, oh yeah, that's, if it rains, it's going to rain there. And it may slip a little further south, but I think that's the deal. So you guys in south of Point Conception, I use these points a lot, Cape Mendocino and Point Conception. They're really good landmarks and it really divides Southern California, Central California, Northern California. I know it's it's not exact, but I use them all the time. So you guys in Southern California are getting a nice little break as well. A few, uh, this is Caltrans, a few scattered showers showing up up around the lake, maybe some snow flurries, but you get the idea. You know, you're not going to see a winter storm warning off of this system. And the other thing you notice is the snow is kind of brown, right? So yeah, and, and in a week, a week and a half, it's going to get browner and it's going to, we're going to lose more of it as you know. But again, we've been very fortunate because we have had so much rain up here and in Southern California. Southern California has got a concern for Santa Ana winds coming up the next couple of days, but they have higher fuel moistures. Snow skiing. Yeah, buddy. This is at uh, Palisades Tahoe. I'm not sure which run this is. I think it looks right out front, huh? Anyway, that's beautiful. They're getting a little bit of cloud cover up there, which makes sense because that front that I showed you, well, let's take a look. The live camera back to the radar. And then here is Sacramento and then Lake Tahoe. So the front's just starting to push in. So the clouds are starting to increase. And you pick that up here on the Palisades camera. So if you're a skier, you're loving it right now. It is ski week, which is kind of fun. Um, this is Heavenly Val, our North Star. And I'm going to do this. I have to reset it sometimes. I'm not real savvy with the cameras yet. North Star. Sorry, you have to see the, how the sausage is made here. Um, but I, I'm such a big fan of live cameras. And the reason is, like what we just did with um, Sutro camera and the radar. Because I'm telling you right now, you can look at the radar. Radar isn't always right. Radar is, it, it, you know, you kind of have to calibrate it. So I'll use live cameras or I'll use people. Like Tamayo lives up in the North Bay. I'll call him sometimes when I see a big bullseye over Mount Tam and I'll go, okay, is it really raining that hard? And oftentimes it's, yes, it's correct, but sometimes it's not. It's no, it's barely raining. So um, live pictures, integral part of doing the weather. They just are. It's just this, the equivalent of looking out the window. But now I have the ability to look out the window in many different locations. So people scan, people having fun. Sun is out. I see drippiness. I think that's, is that? It's almost like it's snow. I see something looks like snow flurries, right? But it's not. I don't know what that is. Can you see it? I don't know. Hmm. All right. Ocean Beach. Surf is moderate size. Tides are good. It's a good surf day, actually. I'm surprised there's nobody out. 
Um, but the tides aren't crazy right now, and the swell isn't nutty. Um, swell is going to peak up next few days, so you know, crab fishermen, it's you guys that are getting in trouble the most right now. Surfers, too. Like, guy out at the guy at Fort Point the other day got swept out under the bridge, and we did it as a news story, and I'm like, yeah, because you're not supposed to surf Fort Point on an outgoing tide. That's everyone knows that because you can't if you get you can't beat the current, right? So Fort Point is the South Tower, the Golden Gate Bridge. You, 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 when the tide, when the buoy's leaning in a certain way, there's you don't go out when the buoy when the tides are going out at uh, uh, going at um, at Fort Point. When the tides out because think about it, it's all going through that little narrow slot it, that you can't beat that current. I don't care who you are. I mean, I know guys, we all have, but if you're not a if you don't know enough to not go out ocean or to, uh, um, Fort Point on an outgoing tide, if you don't know enough not to do that, you probably don't know you, it's it's how to get back in. And that's what happened yesterday. Um, and so, but the tides aren't that. I, the tides are not bad at all right now. That's Ocean Beach is going to get big though the next couple of days. This is Rocky Point in Hawaii. They're calling it, um, I think they're calling it four to, five to eight. And next couple of days, it gets bigger than that. I'm glad I'm not out there. It doesn't look that big, but anytime you can see the lip, when the lip, see how you can count the, like one, two, before the lip hits the bottom. If you can see it and count, that's a good size wave. I, that probably doesn't make sense, but here's um, Steamer's Lane, Steamer Lane, and a little chat real quick, because we're on the back end of weather. We know what's gonna happen, right? It's gonna get warmer around here as we go into um, the next few days. We're gonna see temperatures into the mid 70s in parts of the, the central California, Southern California, most certainly you will as well. And we stay warm for a while. So you're gonna start to hear the birds and the bees. It's gonna feel like spring a little bit. No rain, at least in the immediate forecast. I was gonna do a little lecture on when you're, when you're learning, cause this is a fun way, but the, see this guy taking off right here. He's kind of He's kind of the alpha because he's closest to the point. That's that's when you start, when you paddle out, if you're learning, do what these guys are doing, smart. They're kind of hanging on the inside. They're picking off scraps and just be happy picking off scraps, man, especially if you're learning or over here in the channel. Um, but you don't, the closer you get to the rocks, I, I, you paddle out here, I, these guys all know each other and you'll, you'll or they, in women, but they've done their time. They've paid their dues. And so you don't just paddle out there. Yeah, and yeah, I know if you, you know who you are, if you've done it and you, you know the looks you get, it's because there's an unwritten pecking order. And I, I've done this in Hawaii years ago, back in the 70s, I was at Honolulu Bay. And I, I knew this because I grew up surfing at Ocean Beach and the old timers, Bill Hickey and Bob Weiss and those guys trained me. But I knew to sit on the inside and just grab scraps. And I was having a blast and there was only like four or five of us out. It was a six, six foot day at, at uh, um, Oh my gosh, at, at, at Honolulu Bay, which is a great wave, kind of very local wave. Back in the 70s, it was even more local. But finally, after about two days of doing this, the locals started waving me over. Come over, bro. Come over, bro. And so I, I had earned their respect and by being respectful. So when you're um, respectful, you get respect. And they said, I started getting waves on the main peak. They'd get three, I'd get one. I was stoked because if you go, to, you know, you go to Honolulu Bay, you're not going to get three to one if you're not from there. Um, okay, so there's, uh, and the waves are going to get a little bigger down here in the next couple of days as well, but it's fun size. Weather looks good. A few snow flurries coming that way. This is San Clemente. Um, I want to talk about this real quick. This is uh, a beautiful day, low 70s in Southern California, next few days. They do have some wind concerns. They are going to see Santa Ana wind conditions over the next 48 hours, but you've got, they've got they got a lot of rain right so this isn't palisades fire red flag stuff at all if something does get issued like the wind advisory which will uh if anything gets started it's really difficult to take so don't i don't want you guys getting all freaked out it's easy to do but had you not had that rain then it would be code red but you guys got a bunch of rain san clemente by the way the best climate it is said to have and i think meteorologically it is bared out bared out you know what i mean um it, it has the best weather on the planet Earth. Why is that? Well, uh, they have 300 days of sunshine. 300 days of sunshine. That's more than anybody else. They have a year-round temperature that averages 73 degrees. Their overnight low and their daytime high average out to be higher than anywhere else, which means, you know, it doesn't get that cold, doesn't get that, but it stays, you know, I, I should know what that number is. It's probably in the 60s. And then the ocean temperature 
stays in the 60s and, and, and low 70s all year round. San Clemente, that's why people love it. Um, anyway, this guy's surfing out there. Okay, well, listen, anyway, I appreciate all your support. Uh, a little rambly, but uh, it's not a lot of weather to talk about except, right, it's going to be warmer this weekend, warmer this week, and dry for a while. And remember the rules when you, the pecking order. There's a pecking order. It didn't, you, just because you got a surfboard doesn't mean you, you can just paddle out to the first peak. You just can't. I, I mean, I, I'd let you, but I know people, most people, it's not going to go down. All right. I'll see you back here. Thanks for watching.